Jay Haynes for the Film Sensei YouTube channel. Today we're going to continue on with the decay effect in part two. Now, if you have not watched the short tutorial on the parallax effect and part one of this three part series, then you need to stop right here and go and watch those two videos first. The links are in the description below. Also, if you want to watch the original Andrew Kramer tutorial, which is done in After Effects, I would highly recommend you do that. And a link to that is in the description below. You get a good idea of what we are doing. After you've done those, then on with part two. All right, so this is where we left off in part one. What I'm going to do is just go back uh, and change the graphic to the original graphic and also change my texture back to the original texture that we wanted to use and here we are so now what we're going to do is we're going to add the decay effect around these letters all right so to do that we have to start by creating a map of where the decay is going to actually happen so i'm going to go to new composite shot and i'm going to call this decay map like this and make sure i spelled it correctly i'm going to click ok and i'm going to drag in a plane and on this plane i'm going to add a fractal noise so this is very similar to what we did before originally to create the texture that we have right here in fact it's exactly the same but what i'm going to do now is open up the fractal noise and we're going to make a few adjustments now we're going to use a parallax effect to create the decay so this is going to be a map of where the decay is going to happen if i open up appearance i can change the exposure and if i make that higher number all the way up to say 10 all as high as it can go then it's completely overexposed it's completely white but if i draw back the offset down into the negative numbers then you can see i'm sort of creating these splotchy patterns of white here and that's where the decay is going to be okay now if i adjust the uh, view of this a little bit here you can see the whole plane you can see that the plane has its own transform properties well the fractal noise effect has its own transform properties and if i go into there you can see that there's a scale and if i adjust that scale i can make it bigger or smaller i'm just going to go ahead and slide this down a little bit so that those splotches are all over the place instead of a couple of big ones okay all right so now i'm going to animate the decay to fade in as it comes along so going back down to the offset if i draw this down until it's completely black and there's no white splotches at all i can go ahead and tick on this little circle creating a keyframe here at zero then maybe i'll move forward to about the three second mark or so and then I can just draw back that up a little bit until there's some splotches going on there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now if I go back to the beginning and I scrub through the timeline, you can see how those splotches sort of appear. And that's basically going to be my decay. Now in a minute, we'll do how to do a crack effect using the lightning. But for now, that ought to do. Okay. So now if I go back into my final and i bring in my decay map i can go ahead and tick it to invisible because we don't need to actually see it it just needs to be in the shot to be referenced okay and then i'm going to use yes you guessed it another parallax effect which we've already used two of them and i'm going to bring in a third parallax effect on that texture and i am going to use my f2 key to um change the name of it and i'm going to call this decay all right and then i will open it up and i'm going to source the decay map now you'll notice that it looks the same as it did before but here's the thing the reason is because that is the decay map at zero is completely black but as i start to scrub through you will see that the decay starts to appear in those letters right as the map appears uh and as it appears in the uh in the decay map as those white pieces appear until we get to the point where it's completely decayed now this may work really well for you okay if i zoom in here a little bit you can see it cuts in 
and I can adjust the depth of that however much I want it to cut in. Okay, if I like that deep set cutting, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to leave it fairly subtle. In other words, I'm just going to go about, you know, maybe 10 or so. Okay, so now it's just sort of, you know, decaying right this way. All right, and that's pretty much the effect. Now, you can see right now that the decay happens anywhere that there are letters, right? The letter is there. So it happens on the side of the letters. It happens on the face. It happens on the inside, right? It happens over here, everywhere, okay? Some of the videos that Andrew Kramer did, that's how he made it look. Other videos, he only had it on the face of the video or of the letters, I mean. So how in the world could you get it to be just on the face and not on the sides. Well, what you have to do is restrict where the map is. So I'm going to go back to the decay map. And if I drag in my bevel mat, uh, and I will just untick it because I won't need it uh, to be visible. But then I use a set mat effect. And I put that on the plane. And I say restrict this source the bevel mat. Now it's only restricting to where the face of the letters are, right? And I also maybe will want to, and this will be important if I want to add a choke to it, but I want to get rid of all the black. I want it to either be white or transparent. Well, there's a key that does that, and it's called the demult key. So I can just drag in a demult key, and that will remove all the black and only make the transparent. So now, as I scrub through it, only the white splotches where the face of the letters are will appear. And so when I go back to my final version, now you can see that there is no decay on the edges, only on the white, on the faces of the letters. All right. Now, in one of Andrew Kramer's videos, he actually has it really, uh, you know, choked in on there. How would you go about doing that? Well, what you do is go back to the decay map again and add a matte cleaner effect underneath the set matte effect and then simply choke in the amount. Okay, maybe, you know, a lot. I don't know. Okay. Um, and if, you know, to really show that, what I'm going to do is under the fractal noise, I'm just going to go ahead and... Um, change this keyframe here so that it almost is completely on uh, and then when you go back you can see how that chokes in that's choked in a lot let me go back here maybe and just unchoke it down to five or so and so you can see how there's sort of this line here where it, where that flakes off okay so it looks sort of like this if if that's what you would you would want it to look like right i don't think i want it to be quite that heavy uh obviously and so i am going to draw this back down a bit also i think uh i don't like the choke at least in this example so i think i will go ahead and just tick off the mat cleaner however i have to tell you that uh, uh you know that doesn't look terrible by any means right let me adjust the scale back to something a little more splotchy. And there it is, okay? Um, but that's how that's how he did that. Now, what if I wanted um, to sort of reveal it as, it, if, as if it wipes on like Andrew Kramer does in one of his shots? We can do that, right? All you have to do uh, in the decay map is instead of have it, um, you know, fade in this way like it is now, you just put a mask on here and then just reveal it, uh, you know, with the mask, okay? Um, what if I wanted to change the texture to, say, um, a, uh, a piece of steel, okay? Then at the end, you know, now we have this piece of steel, right? What if I wanted it uh, to be a block of wood or something like that? I could do that as well, right? If I wanted to change the, uh, the graphic itself, then I certainly can do that. And now I have this, you know, different graphic with the same sort of decay happening. Now let's talk about how to create uh, color in that, okay? How would I go about doing that? Let me change back to this and change back to that 
and come back here. Okay, so what if I wanted to add, you know, color into these things, right? Well, here's what I would do. What I need is a map of where all of those colors are. Oh, wait, we have one. It is right here, this decay map. So if I right click on that and say duplicate, then I can go ahead and drag that above the texture. And if I turn it on, you can see that that's exactly where the decay is happening, right? Isn't that cool? So now all I have to do is just change the color of it. Right now it's white, okay? The first thing I would want to do is invert it. And we happen to have an invert color grade. And if I drop an invert on it, now it's black, you see? Okay, now wouldn't it be cool if we could make that black color any color that we want? Well, we can. We can map black to any color we want using a tint effect. Okay, so I'm going to drag a tint effect under that invert. And if I open it up, it says Mac black to whatever color I want. Well, let's map it to, say, a very dark, almost blackish red. Okay, now you can see that I can map 0% all the way up to 100%. I'm going to make it 100%. So now I have this situation where this decay is, you know, almost blood red, right? Now, here's the thing, though. It doesn't have the texture of the original um, letters. But we can do that. All we have to do is what? Add a parallax effect again. So if I add a parallax effect, and then I source the texture, then I have those. And again, I can sort of, you know, make my adjustment there, okay? Pretty slick, right? Okay, now what if I wanted to have it... Um, grow out like it's rust okay well what i would do is i would invert the map and i would come down to the texture and invert that so that it grows outward like a rust on it or maybe some moss right on wood or something like that okay how would i create that moss on wood look well first i would go into my texture and i would change the texture to a wood color. Uh, then I would go to my... Um, and you can see that that is uh, uh, pretty stark. So uh, under the parallax texture, I may draw that back a little bit. You know, I, I don't necessarily want it to be as strong. Um, then I would go to my tint effect, and I maybe would adjust that to tint more towards that kind of extremely dark green look right so now it is sort of uh you know growing moss on blocks of wood right oh you know what we ought to do we ought to go to the graphic and where's the one that i want right there yeah, there we go okay so now i have that that blo those blocks of wood right here right yeah see and that moss is growing all over the wood there. Yeah, that sort of thing. Okay, now how do I create that sort of cracking effect that you saw Andrew Kramer have? Well, let me change my texture back to uh, my new my my uh, uh, stone look. Okay, and maybe we'll leave this. Okay. Go into the decay map, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag a new plane in here. And I'm going to add a lightning effect to it. Okay. And that lightning and electricity looks good, except for the course that's animated. We don't want that. So I'm going to go in to the animation of that. And I'm going to just turn the speed to zero. Okay. So now there is this gigantic crack that runs through it and if I look at it you can see you know there it is oh wait I have a problem hang on we'll go back to the decay map for a second um and that is I need to um set the no I need to add a demult key here there we go so now it's transparent when I go back now you can see that there's a cracking through it now Part of the problem here is, is that I have it colored green. So we want to go ahead and uh, just turn off the decay map altogether so we have the cracks. The other problem is I have the cracks extending instead of 
um, recessing. So I'm just going to, uh, under the decay, go the other direction. And I think I will go ahead and make that deeper. Now you can see there's a problem. And the problem is, is that there's this gigantic kind of divot here that happens, right? What is that? Well, that actually is the glow of the lightning bolt. So if I come into the lightning in electricity and I look at the glow and I set that opacity of that to zero, now the glow is gone. And when you have, you know, now you have just this crack going through, okay? Uh, going back to the K-map, if I were to just sort of maybe slide this a little bit, slide this here. One of the neat things is, is that you can use the growth property and keyframe that, right? So I may start here, back up, keyframe that growth property, come out a little bit and have it grow out. So now when I come back here, you can see it's cracked through, right? But if I come back, it's gone. And then as I scrub through, it sort of cracks through. So you can create all kinds of cracks all over this thing everywhere, right? Another way to do this would be to increase the number of trunks. Let's say I have five trunks instead of uh, one, right? Uh, or I could add more branches, right? So now I have this cracking all over it, right? So pretty much in a nutshell, that's how you develop the decaying effect. So next time, I'm going to talk about how to set the environment, how to add motion to the graphic, uh, and how to um, finish this project. So if you have any questions in the meantime, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.